You bet on me to die. Mother fucker. Some friend you are. Well, joke's on you. I'm gonna live to 102, then die, like the city of Detroit. I'm sorry. I, I just, I wanted to win money. And, uh, <laughs> Deadpool is all about this character, Weasel. He's got glasses, but he's still really handsome, and you can tell he's sort of a pussy magnet, but more for cats. He's just a really caring, sweet guy. And Deadpool goes through some sort of something where he goes from Wade Wilson into this person that can't die. <laughs> And this really affects Weasel. And we watch Weasel go through that roller coaster of emotions. What does this mean to him? What the shit? Hear the music. Deadpool is a guy that sort of walks that tightrope between good and bad. Some kinds of anger can't be managed. His morality is very gray. He usually ends up on the side of the good guys, but not always. You're my hero. No, 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 no. That I ain't. He's unlike any other character that you're going to see in the X-Men universe or, frankly, any comic book universe. Deadpool is tonally, the vibe, just a completely different kind of movie. He's a gift to every writer who writes him because his voice is unique and very, very entertaining. Come on. You gonna leave me all alone here with less angry Rosie O'Donnell? <clears throat> so off-center and offensive to pretty much everybody across the board. I've never said this, but don't swallow. So, so refreshing and fun to do. Every time that I've read the script, I laugh. And I've read the jokes like five times, and it's still funny. Here we are, and we're making the movie, but we're also making the movie the right way, and that's kind of half the battle. The fans kind of own the spirit of Deadpool. They have co-opted him, and they hold him tight. To see him getting done right on the big screen is very exciting. Oh, sounds like your last Saturday night. Yeah. This is true to the comics. He's wearing the costume. He's behaving in a way that is in line with Deadpool in the comics across the board. Three, two, stupid! Worth it. We occupy a space that no other comic book movie has or can. I'm shocked that it took this long to get here, but I'm thankful for it. Deadpool is one of those films that transcends any media. It's not even really a film. It's just the greatest story ever told with guns. That sounds like a fucking franchise. Mark. Back in 1991, the comic book landscape, I must say it, was dominated by Marvel. And they were looking around for new characters to use. And along came Deadpool. Time to make the chimmy fucking changas. Rob Liefeld's first issue of the New Mutants, he dropped down three characters into the book. One of them was a red and black clad mercenary who had a bunch of swords and a bunch of guns and a bunch of pouches. And he was gonna be fighting Cable, who was another big burly character who had a lot of guns and a lot of pouches. Deadpool was a mercenary with ties to the same program that created Wolverine. <laughs> Wolverine had been referred to as Weapon X. <laughs> So I called Marvel and I said, that's Roman numeral X, so that means 10, right? Has there been a weapon nine? Have we seen the guy before? And they said, no. Deadpool was always different than all the other X-Men and different than really any other comic book, partly because he breaks the fourth wall, partly because the tone is so satirical. This shit's gonna have nuts in it. Rob wanted a challenge to Cable that was gonna be different than the things Cable normally fights, which was other big burly men. Deadpool was gonna be a lot faster, a lot more acrobatic. And as far as his dialogue and how he would talk, Rob just said, whatever you wanna do. There was a movie called Twins with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in my mind, Wolverine was Schwarzenegger and Deadpool was the Danny DeVito character. And so in the comic book origin, they let me run with that. Rob's original description notes is he wanted a mercenary by way of Spider-Man. So I thought to myself, all right, Spider-Man with the quips and the sarcastic attitude and all that, just make it a little darker. So I started to make him a wise ass. I made him sarcastic. You big crone cock gobbler. That's not nice. You really gonna fuck this up for me? He could just as easily have been a throwaway character, but we started to get letters in. For the kids at home, a letter is something you write and put in an envelope and put a stamp on it and mail it. Normally, for New Mutants, we'd get about this many letters. For New Mutants 98, which was Deadpool's first issue, we got, like, this many letters. Over 75% of them, somewhere in the letter said, that guy was funny, bring him back. 
When I started writing Deadpool, we wanted to make sure that we put a lot of layers into him and that he would evolve over the course of time. I really saw Deadpool as an nihilist on the surface. He acted like he didn't care, and he wanted to make sure that you knew he didn't care. And then you're not here, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Can we trade names? <clears throat> so a lot of the humor came out of that. So, so grabbing her and then maybe like putting my hand down like that. Yeah, like you're trying to stop. For me, the Deadpool journey started in, I think it was about 2004, was when I first kind of heard about it. I was doing a movie for New Line Cinema at the time, and they brought it up to me, introduced me to the comics, sent a bunch of them over to me, and I read them, and I just kind of fell in love with that whole world. X-Men Origins Wolverine came out, where Ryan first portrayed Deadpool. The version of Deadpool in the Wolverine movie is very different than the Deadpool of the comics. The Wade Wilson part was interesting, and that was not too far off canon, but Deadpool himself was not. I wouldn't even consider that the portrayal of the character. That was something else that happened to a guy named Wade Wilson. Right after Wolverine Origins, Ryan Reynolds used his leverage to get Deadpool optioned as its own film. Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? When we had this opportunity to go back and make a Deadpool movie, the most important intention of the film was to go back to the tone, the essence of the comics, and to make him the Merc with the Mouth. Yeah, let's get it on. People fall in love with characters for a reason, and a lot of times when they make movies, the filmmakers change quintessential elements of the character. I don't want to do that. One of the things that we come back to as comic book fans and readers is character and tone, because story changes from issue to issue, but character and tone remain pretty consistent. Tim's interpretation, along with Ryan's, of Deadpool is so head-on. It's very true to the character. And with a guy like Ryan playing the lead, it has all the appeal and all the charisma that this character has and needs and exhibits all the time. Did she just put a gift card in your mouth? There's some things we couldn't do that I'm sure the fans will miss. Like, Deadpool has multiple personalities. It's pretty easy to do that in a comic because you see different colored thought bubbles. It's pretty hard to do on film without making it completely confusing. So that's one of the things I'd like to explore. Maybe there's a way to do that if we're so fortunate as to do another film. Morning, sleepyhead. <laughs> Freaks like old lady pants in here. There's a sort of like a Deadpool core creative collective that has managed this for the last six years, and that's Tim Miller, that's Rhett Reese, that's Paul Wernick, and me as well. We've just been sort of developing it slowly but surely over those years. Our agent presented us with a comic and said that Fox is gonna try and reinvent the character after what happened with Wolverine. I'm gonna do this the old-fashioned way, with two swords, and maximum effort. Deadpool's a character that really spoke to us. He's a very complex anti-hero, caught in a shame spiral, self-deprecating, kind of self-loathing. And they say, you know, write what you know. So we really latched onto it. We originally pitched a non-origin story, interestingly, just in a Deadpool adventure. And we pitched to Ryan Reynolds, and he enjoyed the pitch, but he was pretty emphatic about the fact that it had to be an origin story. So ultimately, what happened was we kind kind of melded the two. If you think about it, it's a Canadian mercenary with lead pipe cruelty, and he's morally flexible, and he's got cancer, and he's hideously scarred. And these are all sort of items that a lot of studios wouldn't necessarily be anxious to put up on the screen. Looks are everything. You ever heard David Beckham speak? It's like he mouth sex to can of helium. I think Ryan Reynolds got this far on his superior acting method. Ryan Reynolds, as the ambassador of Deadpool, is just winning the fans over every day. Every day, he just gets it. He's got that rogue, badass quality. He's just got that lift. He's just so quick with the quips. He was like sexiest man in the world. He has a huge female following. My freshman year of high school, I may or may not have photoshopped myself and do a picture with Ryan. <laughs> I was really obsessed with Ryan for a good while. Like, his name is on, like, the walls in my childhood room. Like, the graffiti, Ryan Reynolds. Brianna mentioned that she used to have uh, Photoshop pictures of me. Yeah, she did mention something about that. And then we awkwardly moved past it. Ryan was born to play this role. His personality and his DNA is really infused in this character. This character of Deadpool was just made from heaven for Ryan Reynolds or Ryan was made for it. Either way, there is something about Deadpool that accesses the entire range of Ryan Reynolds. The comedy, the romance, the action, things that most actors, when they're lucky, can do one or maybe two of. But Ryan actually does have the ability to do all of those things. Red really is my color. He's got this boy next door, nice guy look about him, and he really is that guy. He's literally 
the nicest guy I've ever met, but he's also nasty. This isn't a duplex. It's chlamydia holding still. <laughs> was that improv? <laughs> that was awesome. He's got this sort of edgy bit of humor that is very 12-year-old juvenile kid in a locker room. People say, kiss the girl, crack a joke, and shoot a gun. And Deadpool slash Wade does all those things in the movie, and Ryan does too. Yeah, like I got bit by a radioactive Sharpe. In issue number two of Cable and Deadpool, which came out in 2004, I had Deadpool describe himself as looking like a Sharpe crossed with Ryan Reynolds. Boo! So I feel like I actually originally cast Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Andre, take uh, half a step to your left. Uh, too much. Uh, a regular person half a step. When Tim came on, we just knew from right at the beginning he was the perfect guy for this. He got the comic book world. He understands it. He lives in that world. Tim just kind of has a bit of that Wade Wilson acerbic attitude in him, and he sort of speaks, moves, and talks like that. And I think it really helped him access the character, and he really kind of understood the character. You see it in the wide. The shot that we've got lined up now, okay. you see the swords in their position. When Tim came in, Fox wanted Tim to prove that he could make this movie, essentially. You know, a guy who doesn't have any film credits, that's like trying to get a credit card for the first time without having any credit. It's tough. So you have to show them in some way. You have to give them some sort of living, breathing, three-dimensional proof. So what he did was he took the fight inside the SUV, which was in the screenplay, and he created a two-minute piece that captured that fight from start to finish. And it was just phenomenal. Let's hope these guys are wearing their brown pants. It was a proof of concept, both in terms of the techniques that he wanted to use in order to make this film, which were pretty revolutionary. But on top of that, it really encapsulated the spirit of Deadpool, the tone, the comedy, and Ryan's voice. Hola! Me llamo Pestina de la Muerta. Test footage was never meant for the eyes of anyone other than studio executives at Fox. And it was meant to just be a loose example of what we could do with this character and how we could kind of bring him to life. It didn't convince Fox at the time to make the movie, so it sat there for a long time. The writers, Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese, and the director, Tim Miller, and Ryan, reached out to me directly. The title of the email was Deadpool Needs Your Ass. And then inside the email, it said assistance, completing the word ass. We reach out to the studio and give us some support. There have been a lot of talk about, can you even do an X-Men movie that is R-rated rather than PG-13? And I know that they wanted to be able to protect the tone of Deadpool, but still see if you could do a slightly softer version. Oh. I'm touching myself tonight. So there were just more months or even years that went by without the movie getting made. In the middle of Comic-Con, I think it was two years ago, Tim was at Comic-Con, and as he was driving home, the footage somehow leaked. And the internet did what it does at its best, which is it blew up. It showed people that it's possible to put Deadpool on the screen the right way, and to put Deadpool on the screen in a way that is totally congruent with the comic. And that really created an uprising to some degree. It ended up becoming a real rallying cry for the fans out there when they saw exactly what Tim and Ryan were trying to do. The noise they made on social media was huge. It was huge for us. And they made enough noise for long enough that it didn't feel like a moment in time or a little bit of a fad. They sustained that roar for months. I think the fans being overwhelmingly supportive of this take on the character, which is different than past takes on the character, it really helps the studio feel like they're making the right decision when they okay a film like this, because it's risky. There's a very short list of suspects who might have leaked it on the internet. Paul and I are probably on that list, but we did not do it. When the test footage did leak, we all called each other. Own up, we won't tell anyone. And it's like, no. I still bust Tim's balls saying that he's the one that leaked the test footage, but he swears that's not true. I think it's just one of those things where you want to connect with the fans early on. So the fans really made me feel comfortable with what we were planning to do. There's a huge fan base already built in for Deadpool. They're the reason we we're here making this movie. And I don't say that in any sort of hyperbolic way. That's a fact. They've been the largest catalyst to us making Deadpool. Everyone on this Deadpool team really understands that world and the tone that we're trying to get. And I think it's a rare thing. All of us are on set every minute of the day, and we've all been here watching this thing come to life slowly but surely.